Orders of the day. Ballot item number 57, order M122, second reading of Bill 122, an act respecting the regulation of registered professional planners. Mr. Milchin. Madam Speaker, uh, I move second reading of Bill 122, an act respecting registered professional planners. Mr. Melchin has moved second reading of Bill 122, an act respecting the regulation of res registered professional planners pursuant to Standing Order 98. The member has 12 minutes for his presentation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise in the House this afternoon uh, to speak to my private member's bill, Bill 122, the Registered Professional Planners Act. And I want to note that in our gallery today, we have a number of registered professional planners and representatives of the organization. And Madam Speaker, this bill uh, seeks to repeal the dated Ontario Professional Planners Institute Act of 1994, and if passed, will enact an updated and modernized piece of legislation that will govern urban, rural, and regional planners across Ontario. Uh, the new Act continues the Ontario Professional Planners Institute, the professional organization that is the voice of pl the planning profession in Ontario. The OPPI is composed of nearly 4,500 skilled professionals who work in government, private practice, universities and not-for-profit agencies in the fields of urban and rural development, urban design, environmental planning, transportation, health, social services, housing and economic development. Madam Speaker, if passed, this Act will safeguard the public interest by further strengthening the profession's strict practice requirements and further improve accountability of the Institute and its members. The bill proposes to add additional definitions and title protection for professional planners. It creates prohibitions and offences respecting the use of specified designations and initials by unauthorized individuals. And further, it provides a framework for membership and sets out procedures for dealing with matters such as complaints against current and former registered professional planners, procedures for determining whether a member of the institute is incapacitated, and powers to appoint an investigator to examine professional misconduct. Madam Speaker, this act is significant to the legislature in the province because it proposes legislation that governs an institute and its professional members who are integral to so much of the work that's done both in this legislature and municipalities across the province. Professional planners are the highly skilled and accredited professionals who help create, advise, and implement public policy and investments in all of our municipalities and regions. And as many of you know, especially those members who served on municipal council, planners continuously identify community needs and develop short and long-term plans to create, grow, and revitalize a community or area. And regardless of whether you represent an urban or rural area uh, or a small municipality, we all have planners, and they help shape the policy that makes our communities great places to live, work, and play. Madam Speaker, in my 17 years on Municipal Council, now nearly three years as an MPP, and in a previous life and professional practice, uh, I learned uh, the intrinsic ability of planners to work co uh, collaboratively uh, with other professionals in a range of disciplines, such as engineers, architects, environmental professionals, and dare I say it, even with politicians. Oh. And as elected officials, we, we rely, well, that, that's the biggest uh, benefit that they have, I suppose. As elected officials, we rely on planners to provide us with professional opinions on key uh, policy matters. And one thing can't be emphasized enough. Professional planners play a crucial role in ensuring that Ontario and its various municipalities uh, evolve in a way that protects our economic well-being, our vital resources, and healthy lifestyles. So, Madam Speaker, the timing of this bill is very important uh, because of a number of key changes that have been enacted to, to planning in Ontario. Uh, our government uh, initiated a number of reforms to planning in 2015, Bill 73, the Smart Growth for Our Communities Act, and also changes to the Development Charges Act and Planning Act. And uh, they resulted in improvements that gave municipalities more ability uh, to fund growth, to have a greater say in how their communities grow, uh, to make the development charge system more predictable, 
and make planning appeals more predictable. And all of that depends on the advice of our professional planners. And of course, Madam Speaker, the historic investments that our government is making in infrastructure also require professional planners to give advice on how to implement uh, these decisions and also how to help communities uh, change their zoning and update their zoning bylaws to get the benefit from these infrastructure investments. Uh, Madam Speaker, of course, uh, there's uh, the other key area that our government uh, has undertaken uh, a review of is our growth plans and our uh, green belt. And that relies again on the good advice of our professional planners and will rely on them going forward over the years to help implement these plans. And so whatever one's view are on these policies, we can all agree that without professional planners, we cannot move forward on any of them. So, Madam Speaker, uh, what this private member's uh, bill will do is uh, it will help modernize this act. At one point, Ontario was the first jurisdiction in the country to have an act governing professional planners, and we were leading the way in uh, the, uh, the prof uh, registering the pro professional planner designation and designating how the profession should be governed. But after close to 25 years, uh, many other jurisdictions across the country have enacted more modern legislation and have leapfrogged. So that's why it's important in Ontario for us to update this legislation. This legislation will provide uh, expanded title rights to planners so that the titled re registered professional planner or RPP will remain protected and reserved for use by practicing full members of the OPPI. And the title professional planner will be protected in uh, other contexts. It's also important to note that employers will continue to be able to choose whether they want to hire somebody with this designation or not. There will also be a holding out provision that's very important for the public protection uh, so that a person does not represent themselves as a professional planner when they're not registered as a member of the OPPI. So this means that a person who reasonably thinks uh, that they're hiring somebody to provide them planning advice will have great, greater certainty about the credentials and accreditation of the person they're hiring. So, Madam Speaker, after very uh, lengthy discussions uh, with the OPPI, uh, we've come up with a, a clause that guarantees uh, what that accreditation level will be and will protect the public at large. It will also give the OPPI the ability to level uh, fines if the, after uh, a proper hearing it's determined that somebody has held themselves out to be uh, some, a professional planner when in fact they're not. And uh, we've found uh, a level of fine that's comparable to other professions, uh, a fine of $15,000, which will act as an effective deterrent. Uh, this bill will also provide new investigation powers to the OPPI so that they'll have the ability uh, to require an individual to provide documentation and evidence of what, uh, what their credentials are, and also, in extreme circumstances, the ability to get a search warrant uh, if it's required. So, Madam Speaker, what this bill does uh, is it does not create a regulated profession, as some other professions are, but it does give uh, very important uh, title protection to uh, the profession of planners in this province. It provides the ability uh, to uh, uh, ensure enforcement around uh, the holdout uh, provisions if a person provides uh, services in the uh, province of Ontario in the area of professional planning. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, over the course of a year and a half, I've had the great privilege and honour uh, of working with the women and men uh, of the OPPI. Many of them I, I knew from my previous experience, uh, but certainly working with them on the focus of what it means uh, to have a well-regulated profession actually opened up my, my eyes even further uh, to the great benefits that they provide uh, to our communities and to the provincial government as well uh, through the way that they uh, offer their services, offer their advice, and offer us an ability to look uh, past the immediate but long into the future. So, Madam Speaker, when we discuss uh, 
this Act, I would hope that all members of this House uh, think keenly about how uh, they might rely on a professional planner in their community, how their municipality uh, might need the advice of a professional planner, how an individual wishing to make an investment in their community uh, to build a new structure, to develop a new parcel of land, to create a new subdivision, to create more uh, housing and more affordable housing, how all of those individuals rely on the sound advice of a professional planner, and how important it is uh, that in an era when there are so many consultants, so many professionals out there, uh, that we all have a common language and a common understanding to understand who truly uh, is accredited, has the experience, has the credentials, and also has the accountability that when they offer advice, uh, we know the true uh, value and quality of that advice. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, I was very keenly aware also in, uh, in the drafting of this legislation that there might be uh, many smaller municipalities uh, that don't have the benefit of large staff, planning staffs uh, and what their impact might be. And I did specifically ask the OPPI as part of the consultation uh, to talk to AMO, uh, to talk to some of those smaller municipalities, to get their input into this bill and also provide their reassurance uh, that people who work as planners in those municipalities but who might not currently have this designation, uh, that they could continue to work for that municipality. That we would not create a, a new we're not creating a new regulatory uh, regime that creates new costs uh, or new barriers uh, for small municipalities uh, to employ people to provide them with the advice and, and the transactional abilities uh, to uh, process development applications. That was very important that we do that, mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, every municipality in this province can continue to, to govern itself and manage its resources as need be. Uh, those who, who choose to use registered professional planners will be able to. Those who choose not to uh, will not be required to. But for the rest of us, Madam Speaker, uh, going forward, we'll be able to have great confidence that when we speak to somebody uh, with the designation of a registered professional planner, we'll be able to rely on their advice to know that they will give us the best advice to help build our province up. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Further debate. Further debate. I recognize the member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. And I rise today to speak to uh, Bill 122. And not unlike uh, the sponsor of, of the bill from Etobicoke Lakeshore, I also served as municipal councillor for 13 years with the town of Whitby, and for that period, I was the chair of the Planning and Development Committee. And uh, certainly during that period, uh, I came to appreciate that uh, planners are skilled professionals who work to improve the quality and livability of material communities, healthy and sustainable community speaker. And what's clear in, in that process is shifting policy objectives and competing interests in communities continue to evolve with social and technological changes. Planners, in my belief, have a significant role in terms of uh, encouraging Ontario residents to think about the public realm first and the role it can play in effectively developing healthy and sustainable communities. Now, planners do this uh, by balancing the, the interests of communities and, and individuals, and what a balance it is uh, that I saw day in and day out by the Commissioner of Planning in the town of Whitby, and similarly the Commissioner of Planning at the region of Durham, and, and affecting development uh, of the uh, communities that form the region of Durham, uh, the eight, uh, to ensure which uh, uh, as a short and mid and long-term objective uh, affordable, compact, diverse, and livable communities. Speaker, uh, professional planners, as uh, my colleague from Tobacco Lakeshore pointed out, are represented by the Ontario Professional Planners Institute. And they represent over 4,000 professional planners in Ontario, many of whom uh, were uh, working at the town of Whitby in the region of Durham, 
and they have a wide suite of responsibilities, such as establishing the professional code of practice of its members, which is an important process in itself. But equally important, they also have a mandatory program of continuous professional learning as a requirement of membership to ensure that members are current with modern practices. And ever more important when you have uh, of changes uh, related to the provincial policy planning statement and the growth plan and other planning pieces as we go forward. Now, more recently, Speaker, the, uh, the Institute have been pursuing legislative changes to enable regulation of the planning profession, and that in itself is the catalyst for Bill 122. And the bill, Speaker, proposes to repeal the Ontario Professional Planners Institute Act 1994 and wouldn't act what we're debating today, the Registered Professional Planners Act in its place. And the bill would establish the powers and responsibilities of the Professional Planners Institute in its role as the representative organization of the representative organization of professional planners. Now, while the Ontario Progressive Conservative Caucus uh, will be supporting this bill uh, during second reading, we're somewhat concerned about the timing of the bill. It's the timing of the bill. Because as you know, Speaker, uh, Bill 68, Modernizing Ontario's Municipal Legislation Act 2017 is also before the legislature. And when you step back and you look at that, that volume of, of uh, legislative direction, it's an omnibus bill which seeks to change over a dozen other laws in Ontario. And while supportive of some aspects of Bill 68, and there's been a broad discussion of that in this legislature, which respond to requests from municipalities, such as definitions of meetings, expanding prudent investor rules, and moving the start date for newly elected councils, we uh, question why the government and the member from Tobago Lakeshore didn't roll the proposed measures within Bill 122 into Bill 168. But at the end of the day, we, we have a uh, bill before us uh, today that takes into account uh, what certainly I've been hearing in, in my municipality through uh, fairly regular interactions with some of the regional councillors at uh, the region of Durham and the town of Whitby. And it certainly reflects the direction that they'd like to see. And certainly, uh, as a caucus, we're supportive of that direction. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Further debate. Further debate. I recognize the member from Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's uh, always a privilege to rise on the part of the people of Parkdale High Park and, and in Ontario. I just want to acknowledge uh, on behalf of our member from Essex that Essex High School was here and Walkerville Collegiate was here, so welcome. Uh, but to get back to the member's bill, uh, my colleague from Etobicoke Lake Shore, and absolutely we in the New Democratic Party support this. It's been almost 25 years since this act was updated, and certainly the time is now, and time is it's, it's due. Um, so really, in terms of the bill itself, it's pretty pro forma. Uh, changes some of the credentialing, some of the accreditation, some of the, the fines, uh, etc. Um, again, all of this for the Ontario Professional Planners Institute, and that's fine. We're good with that. Um, it does give me an opportunity to talk about some of the initiatives that we've undertaken here uh, around planning, because I speak, of course, as a downtown Torontonian, and my goodness, uh, the city has exploded, uh, Madam Speaker, in the decades that I've lived here. Uh, and certainly the rate of development um, and the kind of development is a concern for everybody, I think, in downtown Toronto. You know, we're building really a city the size of Kingston in the downtown core almost every year, just in terms of density. This is a phenomenal achievement, but it's also a phenomenal challenge. And uh, planners are absolutely at the core of that. Uh, you know, even in my writing, where condo development has picked up a pace, it's hard to keep up with the new developments, with the community meetings. And years ago, I introduced a bill to reform the Ontario Municipal Board. Uh, the, and it was supported by the City of Toronto, which was to get the OMB out of the planning of the City of Toronto. It's an unelected board, 
We don't think it's particularly responsive sometimes, particularly to the needs of constituents. And, uh, and we've had assurance from the government that reforming the OMB is also on their agenda. So I guess what I'm pleading with my, my, the parliamentary assistant over there, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore, is that we get that reform of the OMB soon, because we've been fighting for it on this side of the aisle of the New Democratic Party for years. I think I've tabled that bill four or five times at this point. And whether it goes as far as we're asking or does something, certainly something is needed. You know, it's interesting, in my writing, there are two very different communities represented. We have some of the wealthiest people in Toronto that live in my riding, and we have some of the poorest, the most marginalized people in Toronto living in my riding. And uh, I won't say where I was, uh, but at one meeting, uh, in one part of the riding, I talked about OMB reform to huge cheers. Um, rental reform, silence. The other part of my riding talked about rental reform, huge cheers. OMB silence, you can guess. Um, but that's the other bill that, of course, we've been fighting for. And my colleague, the member from Toronto, Danforth, was really seminal on this in, in bringing forward reforms to uh, our rental uh, processes here. And certainly in the NDP, we're on record going back a long time for more rent control because we're losing that wonderful mix in our city where people of all income levels can live. It's becoming a city for wealthy people only. We have to fight back against that. That's planning, too. At any rate, um, the other issue, of course, that I've been fighting for for years and introduced bills many, multiple times was inclusionary zoning. Uh, again, we're one of the few cities of our size that doesn't have some form of inclusionary zoning. The government has acquiesced. The government's brought something in on that. We're a little concerned about some of the aspects of that bill, I have to say. We certainly think that our councillors and our planners have some flexibility where that's concerned uh, with Section 37 dollars, for example, that it shouldn't be an either or situation, that they should be able to have the flexibility of both when they're looking at bringing more affordable housing into the mix. But again, um, that's a response to you know, having enclaves of the wealthy and enclaves of the not so wealthy and enclaves of the marginalized, that we really need to be a city where those folk live together, and that's part of the diversity and part of the richness of our community. A pet beef, because I want to leave some time for my colleague from Toronto Danforth, but a pet beef is the historical legacies of our city. You know, I often uh, look at, I mean, I'm going to Europe, I'm lucky I'm going to Europe this summer. Uh, and of course, in Europe, when you think of the great cities of Europe, you think of cities that really value their historical legacy, their, archi their architecture. And yet here, often that's left up to, you know, small groups of volunteers who have time on their hands to fight for a building or to fight for something. Um, that is not the way it should be. You know, we need more architecture and less architecture, if I can use that term, in our city. Um, and again, planners are part of that process too. Uh, we, I know, as a United Church minister, we're losing about a church a week across the country. Now imagine losing a church a week in Europe. Um, again, buildings, not all churches are significant architecturally, but some are. Uh, and again, this cannot be left up purely uh, to a dollars and cents, you know, to the market. It can't be left up to the market. It has to be planned. It has to have some input. And again, you know, there's no single body here who's at fault for that. Um, certainly, you know, we are all responsible for that. But again, planners in the midst of that. So um, I'm going to leave time, as I said, for the, for the member from Toronto, Danforth. Uh, but just to say that absolutely, at no time in our history has planning been more important than right now. And so I'm happy to do anything to facilitate that process with professional planners and, and updating uh, this legislation which govern, governs them is absolutely apropos, and of course, we will support it. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I recognize the member from Trinity Spadina. Well, thank you again, uh, Madam Speaker. I'm very uh, pleased to speak to this bill, um, titled uh, Register Professional Planners Act 2017, presented by, uh, introduced by my good friend, uh, member from Etobicoke Lake Short. I think it's, uh, it's a very good bill, and uh, I'll be uh, supporting this. Um, you know, my, my uh, colleague from uh, Parkdale High Park uh, spoke very well uh, about the challenges that we're facing in the downtown core. 
I happen to represent a riding um, uh, that uh, I would say half or at least half of the downtown Toronto. We've seen unprecedented growth in the last 15 years. During this Spadina, if you go anywhere south of college now, you'll see cranes and, uh, and, and the construction sites, uh, condominiums, and lots of those are uh, and commercial buildings are popping up as well. So um, professional uh, planners, uh, they play a key role in the uh, development or gentrification, in, in many cases in my writing, of our community. You know, I, every time I go to a, um, a, a meeting where uh, the developer will consult with the, uh, the community, um, I always, I always want to wait and listen to the uh, the vice, uh, the um, the knowledge, the, in, the insightful knowledge or, uh, provided by the planner, because these the stuff that they look look at, the stuff that they they have to think about, goes beyond uh, what uh, uh, most of people in the room would uh, initially react to. So I think uh, it's this is a very good bill. You know, it, it helps me. Uh, I think I'll take this opportunity to talk talk about uh, some of the challenges that I. You know, I've been hearing in my writing, um, thinking back, you know, three years ago uh, when I was knocking on doors, people keep telling me that uh, a lot of these uh, planning uh, were not done uh, in, in with uh, respecting in, in the uh, with the process respecting the uh, uh, the thoughts and suggestion uh, from the from the from the residents in the community. You know, I think it's so important that in that process. Uh, whether it's one condo or whether it's a whole strip of uh, a redevelopment, we must listen to our constituents. We must listen to people who live in those communities and respect their view. So I know the government has, uh, has, has uh, done quite a bit of work on that uh, through the Planning Act, the modern, uh, modernization of the Planning Act, as well as uh, in, we're in the process of reforming OMB making sure um, the local voice are heard at, at those level. As well, um, I, uh, I spoke to inclusionary zoning bill brought in uh, by, by the government last year, and I, I know it's, uh, it's in the works, and I, ho I hope to see it um, in, in its official uh, form adopted by uh, City of Toronto, because it's going to add a lot more affordable units and bring players, uh, stakeholders like co-op, you know, into into officially into the uh, the, the planning and uh, into that uh, search for a solution for more affordable housing around around Toronto. And I one more thing I must add is that um, we also in the, in the planning uh, of our our city and the redevelopment, we must look at heritage buildings. You know, we have so so many heritage buildings in the downtown core, downtown Toronto. I speak to. Um, and we're not doing a good job protecting them. You know, we're not pro pro providing incentive for these heritage building owner to uh, do what they need to do to keep these properties. And in the States, people are proud to have a heritage building, but here they feel that they're, being, they, they're burdened to, uh, when it comes to upkeeping, retrofitting, and, uh, and, and maintaining. The, these these buildings, it's becoming. Um, they feel they're they're left out. There is no uh, less support. They feel that they're coming from, you know, all three levels of government. So I think we got to do a better job in supporting those uh, heritage building owners. So I'd be. Uh, I'll leave my some, some time to my good colleagues to speak to this bill as well. I urge all member of this house to uh, support this uh, very timely, very needed bill. Thank you. Further debate. Further debate. I recognize the member from Bruce Gray Owen Thank Sound. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Please, please to rise and speak today to Bill 122. In 1994, Ontario pioneered the first private legislation in the country to protect the title of registered professional planner. Professional planners are people who are ultimately tasked with determining our community's state of health and well-being by being responsible for analyzing and implementing decisions on how our physical space is developed and revitalized. It's 2017, and so we are 20 years behind on this legislation. At the same time, we're on the cusp of a significant shift in our province's population growth and development to match that transformation. Clearly, it's time for an update, and this legislation is an important step in laying the foundation for that coming transformation. 
I will be supporting this bill because it's time to bring it up to date, but also because I support the accountability piece, and that is protecting the Ontario consumer by making the planning profession accountable to the people through various changes, namely ensuring consumers are receiving evidence and advice from accredited professionals. The proposed act would continue to protect the title of Registered Professional Planner, or RPP, and reserve its use for practicing full members of the Ontario Professional Planners Institute, OPPI, which is 4,500 members strong today. The title Professional Planner would also be protected, except when used in different contexts, such as Financial Professional Planner in a bank. At the same time, the bill would prevent people from identifying themselves <coughs> as a professional planner and thereby prohibiting just anyone from providing a professional opinion on planning matters, which is key in ensuring the consumer is protected. The proposal is also to penalize anyone who is not a member of the Institute but uses its preferred acronyms or designations to be held liable and face a $15,000 fine. Furthermore, the Act would also specify more precisely the duties of the regulator, which is the Institute, OPPI. The Act would also make it mandatory requirement to have public members serve in council. Altogether, these changes, I believe, will do both, provide better title protection of pro professional planners and increase accountability to the people of Ontario. I would now like to give a local perspective on this bill and share some of the feedback that I received from my constituents. Randy Scherzer is a Gray County's Director of Planning, supports this legislation, which he adds is already in place in other jurisdictions. He believes this change will bring stronger accountability to those who are tasked with decision to grow and develop our communities. Liz Buckton, who works as a senior plan planner with the municipality of Meaford and is a member of OPPI, believes Bill 122 will strengthen accountability and the ability of communities to make better planning decisions in the public interest. She says, and I quote, I strongly agree with OPPI's president, who has stated emphatically that great plans need great planners. Meaford's planning department was recently faced with critical decisions involving the possible NEC expansion, the proposed take in thousands of acres of land in the local area under planning control of the Niagara Escarpment Commission. And so the questions local planners had to take into consideration was how did this proposal affect local planning regulations, local landowners, and future growth. In the end, the decision was that the proposed expansion not proceed, which pleased my constituents, who had argued all along that the current planning policies, together with conservation authority regulations and policies, already manage growth and protect the natural environment. Clearly, land use and development decisions are critical, and I'm pleased to support an update to the legislation that will help strengthen accountability in the planning profession with a higher degree of oversight, as well as commitment to make decisions that reflect the public good. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Further debate. Further debate. Further debate. I recognize the member from Toronto Danforth. Speaker, thank you very much, and it's a pleasure to rise in support of the bill put forward by the member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. I don't think there's any question, Speaker, that in this society, it's critical that we have a full supply of, a full complement of capable planners and that there is proper regulation and proper support for that regulation. Speaker, you, in fact, are, are deeply familiar with my riding. Uh, you have a long history with my riding, Speaker, and I'm very pleased that you have that history, in fact. So, as you may well be aware, we're fairly well-developed neighbourhood already, uh, but one that is going to be going through substantial changes in the decades to come. And as with my colleague in Parkdale High Park, the role uh, of the Ontario Municipal Bo Board and its function when it comes to supporting or opposing municipal decisions on planning is critical. Planners are crucially necessary to dealing with intensification of cities so that, in fact, that intensification can take place in a way that preserves those human values, that allows us to have walkable streets, allows us to go down streets that aren't wind tunnels, but really are pleasant, intensified avenues. I, I know from talking to my constituents that there have been, over the years, a number of planning issues which, for them, have been critical. One of the ones that's going on right now is along Broadview Avenue, which is running parallel to the Don Valley north of the Danforth, the section that I'm interested in at this point. Uh, the City of Toronto is engaged in a process of planning uh, along there, looking at some intensification, but an intensification that would fit in with the existing fabric of the neighbourhood. There's huge concern amongst the people who live along Broadview that the plan that's been brought forward by the city that was the subject of an extensive consultation, extensive debate, uh, something that most people can support, and if they can't support it, they can live with it. Uh, but there are those others who are not interested in the plan as it is written, as it's been proposed, 
who want to intensify far more than what's been proposed. I think what's been brought forward by the city is sensible. The appeal to the Ontario Municipal Board undermines support for intensification when you don't have the buy-in from the community around the area. And so, Speaker, there's no doubt in my mind that there will be planners who will be brought in to this matter to argue. But in many ways, Speaker, and you're well aware of this, often the OMB just ignores what planners have to say. I talked to my colleagues who are councillors at the City of Toronto, a member for Etobicoke Lecture, I'm sure has been there. He's been on that council, but he's also talked to people who've dealt with development proposals that are out of scale, that don't make sense in a particular area. But far too often, sensible planning advice and decisions made by a municipality, and I'll talk about the City of Toronto right now, get ignored at the Ontario Municipal Board. It is as if planning didn't exist. And if it existed, it was seen as an obstacle to making a big bag of cash from a particular piece of property. I'll give you another example, much smaller street in my riding, Albemarle, south of the Danforth. Very nice street, two and three story houses on the side of a hill, so it's got a very interesting gradient. On the north side of the street, you have to go up about two stories to get to the front porch and then go up the front porch to the door. South side of the street, everything's at ground level with the houses behind the, the front, dropping again down into a ravine. A uh, recent fight in the, on that street in the last two years was against a proposal to put in a large cube in the midst of houses that really have that traditional Riverdale look, peaked roofs, uh, a porch that's comfortable to sit on, to sit out on in good weather, and introducing a, an urban form, a house form, that reflects nothing of the history, nothing of the architectural detailing that's there. So in my mind, Speaker, oh, and I should just add again that although the City of Toronto didn't support it, although the residents opposed it, the OMB overruled everyone and plonked it in the middle of that street, creating this really discordant sense of what that street is and what it should look like in the future. Having regulated, capable planners whose opinions are weighed by municipal politicians, large municipalities, small ones, and applying their advice without having the OMB overrule them all the time is going to be critical. So what the members brought forward is a good bill. It just needs further action, and in particular, bringing the OMB to heel, but in the City of Toronto, a big enough jurisdiction, larger than many provinces, letting the City of Toronto make its own planning decisions. It hires professional planners. Let them do their work. Let us respect their work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Further debate. Further debate. Further debate. I recognize the member from Dufferin Caledon. Sorry. I recognize the member from Dundas and Castor and Flambrook. Thanks very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, I'm uh, pleased to uh, stand in support of the bill uh, introduced by the, uh, the honourable member from Etobicoke Lakeshore, who uh, is, uh, has a legendary reputation in this uh, community and as a planner. And I was pleased to work closely with him when I was Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, and uh, he always uh, was able to lend some, uh, some wise counsel and some great advice. Uh, you know, planning is a complex uh, uh, process riddled with many challenges, and uh, there are some who have spent some time talking about uh, some of the uh, the uh, related uh, integrated issues. And uh, I was pleased as minister to uh, uh, be part of an activist centrist government that uh, that looked at introducing a long-term housing plan and reviewing the OMB and embracing inclusive zoning and and insisting on a bylaw on Granny Suites and, uh, and recruiting David Crombie was a bit of a bit of a godsend, Madam Speaker, to uh, do that coordinated view. So, so this is, uh, I can speak as a former city councillor and a former small town mayor. I know planning is really critical and uh, uh, the, the better we are at it, uh, the easier it is to turn our, uh, our cities into communities and our streets into neighborhoods. And I think that's what professional planners uh, 
when all is said and done, uh, when they're doing their job well, and most of them do it very, very well. That's what it's all about. So this bill, uh, uh, very quickly, will uh, strengthen practice requirements, improve accountability, sharpen definitions, build in a complete process, uh, provide for uh, an investigative uh, 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 vehicle for professional misconduct. In short, protect all the very good planners who want to do very good planning from the very few planners who can have a tendency when they're left to their own devices to make uh, things difficult. I think the member <laughs> from Etobicoke Lakeshore would acknowledge that as well. So uh, uh, those are all things that are happening here. You know, we're always caught in government between, uh, you know, you're, you're 20 years too late but why are you rushing things? Right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it, I'd rather be part of a government that's doing too much, too fast, and have to come back maybe with the wise counsel of, uh, of people in, in the government and the little members opposite to kind of get things straight. This is the next step in a process. I suspect down the road uh, we may very end, well end up, I don't know, uh, Member from Etobicoke Lakeshore, whether we'll be into a delegated authority kind of uh, regulatory regime or not, that's not for us to decide today. Our job today is to decide to take the next step. And I think this is a very uh, reasonable, responsible, and uh, wonderful way to raise public awareness about the importance of planning, to update existing legislation, and to affirm in a very intentional way, our professional planners. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Mr. Madam Speaker. Thank you for the debate. For the debate, I recognize the matter from Devon Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. I, I'm not going to repeat a lot of what everyone has said. Uh, we are going to, so I'm, I'm happy to support uh, Bill 122. Uh, frankly, I think for people who are listening to today's debate, uh, they would be surprised that we don't already have this in place in Ontario. But I would be remiss uh, if we're going to talk about uh, professional planners to not uh, talk about R.J. Burnside and Associates. So many of you will recognize the name Burnside and Associates. Uh, it proudly began, uh, Bob Burnside was the founder, and um, he will tell you that he's a proud farm boy from Amaranth Township in Dufferin County. And now uh, Burnside and Associates operate in Africa, Asia, the Caribbean, uh, South America. They were, uh, they were instrumental in partnering with um, our Indigenous communities across Canada. And you will see uh, their, Bob's legacy uh, throughout Ontario and, in fact, the world. Um, he has been an incredible mentor and uh, a great source of advice for me over my years uh, serving as the uh, member for Dufferin Caledon. And uh, so I, I think I, I should acknowledge Bob's in, uh, involvement as a planner. Um, and uh, in fact, one of my family members, one of my many brothers, uh, one of them is a planner. Uh, I won't promote him because then I might get accused of, uh, of, of free advertising. Um, but it is, uh, it is something that most of us assume is already happening. And we rely uh, both from government, municipal, uh, federal, provincial, rely on that skill set. Uh, to make sure that decisions as we plan our communities, as we plan our neighbourhoods, as we decide on our infrastructure needs, um, we, we rely on that, that professionalism and uh, what, what planners bring to the table in terms of um, their skill sets. So uh, I, I smiled when the member from, oh, it's such a long riding, Hamilton, Ancaster, West Flamborough, Dundas, throw them all in, um, talked about uh, the speed at which we uh, move here in government. Uh, it was actually in 1987 that the four chapters of the Ontario Institute for Planners came together, and uh, so here we are going to the next step. Of course, in 94, uh, we passed the first act, and uh, now we're moving forward with uh, Bill 122. Um, congratulations on your work. I know that there was a lot of 
uh, background and a lot of research and a lot of consultation that came uh, before you tabled this legislation. Um, so I'd like to acknowledge and thank you for that. Uh, it's an important part of bringing forward um, the, uh, the, the concept and making sure that we get it right. Um, so congratulations and happy to support. Further debate, further debate. I recognize the member from Davenport. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and good afternoon. It is my pleasure to rise in the House and speak to the fantastic bill put forward by my colleague and friend from Etobicoke Lakeshore, uh, the Registered Professional Planners Act 2017. And I want to take a moment to welcome and recognize all of the registered professional planners that we have here today, all members of the OPPI. So thank you very much for joining in on the debate here this afternoon. As someone who represents a downtown riding and has seen the massive explosion of growth in Davenport over the past number of years, I absolutely know the importance of the work that planners do to make cities and towns across the province more livable. Planners across this province work tirelessly to beautify the places we live, ensure that it is easy for us to get to the places we work, while at the same time making sure that our communities have places to grow for generations. Madam Speaker, this act is significant to the legislature and to the province because it governs an institute and its professional members who are integral to the work we do in this House as well as to the municipalities, the work the municipalities do across the province. Madam Speaker, <coughs> I know that city planning is more complicated than SimCity makes it out to be, and we need to acknowledge the fact that professional planners are highly skilled and accredited professionals. We all know in this legislature that it is professional planners in our communities who help create, advise, and help implement policy and investments in each of our municipalities and regions. In my own constituency of Davenport alone, I have had many opportunities to meet with planners who are currently who are constantly identifying community needs and are developing plans to create grow or revitalize areas within my community. And I also know that planners don't just do this in Toronto. From Moonbeam and Musanin to right outside Steam Whistle Brewery, you have planners. That is why the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore's bill is so important. This bill provides a much needed update to the dated Ontario Professional Planners Act and would enact uh, an updated and modernized piece of legislation that would govern urban, rural and regional planners across Ontario. We know that there are nearly 4,500 skilled professionals who work in government, private practice, universities and not-for-profit agencies doing all sorts of different work. They are working on rural and urban development, urban design, environmental planning, transportation, health social services, housing, and economic development. This act would safeguard the public interest by further strengthening the profession's strict practice requirements and improve the accountability of the Institute and its members. I know that the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore has been an active champion on this issue for years. I know that he has been a champion of protecting the public interest through his many years on Toronto City Council and here in this legislative chamber. This bill is the ultimate expression of that. This bill ensures that municipalities and the province will be able to rely on the expert opinions presented to them. This bill improves accountability in towards planners across this province and their governing body. This bill gives the tools that the Ontario professional planners need to ensure that the public trust is being upheld and brings legislation for professional planners into line with other provinces. Madam Speaker, we all know the importance of this bill. We know that city planning is an art and a science that is practiced by professionals, and I'm happy to support this bill. Thank you. I will return back to the member from the Topical Lecture to wrap up. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank all of the members for their thoughtful remarks. The member from Whitby Oshawa, Parkdale High Park, Trinity Spadina, Bruce Gray Owen Sound, Toronto Danforth, Dundas Ancaster Flamborough, Dufferin Caledon, and my seatmate from Davenport. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, as uh, we've, uh, we've heard, great plans need great planners, and great planners need great governance for their profession. 
and this bill seeks to update uh, the governance regime for Ontario's professional planners. It will do it in a measured and thoughtful way. It's being done after very extensive consultation with other related professions uh, that our planners work with, with municipalities and other stakeholders. We sought to get this right. Uh, it's a once-in-a-generation opportunity that we're going to have to update this legislation. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, through you to the members uh, in the public gallery today, you should all hold your heads very high because you heard from member after member of this legislature in what high regard we hold you and the work that you do for us every single day. Madam, Madam Speaker, Ontario's professional planners give us good advice every single day in the smallest hamlet, the largest municipality, in private boardrooms, or to members of this government. Madam Speaker, our province has been building up for 150 years, and through much of that time with the great advice of professional planners. And I know with the investments in infrastructure we have and the involving society and communities we have, the greatest plans are yet to come. Thank you. So pray. The time provided for private member public business has expired. We will deal first with bylaw item number 55, standing in the name of Mr. Hardeman. Mr. Hardeman has moved private members' notice motion number 52. Is it the pleasure of the House the motion carry? Oh, I hear carry. I hear carry. Mr. Bradley has moved second reading motion item number uh, bill number 128 an act to proclaim lauren harris day is it the pleasure of the house the motion carry yes. i hear carry second reading of the bill does your motion you present the law okay. all right i'm going to turn to the min uh, the member from st catherine to identify the committee uh, standing committee on regulations and private bills okay, i hear that the member identify agree Great. Congratulations. Okay. Okay. Mr. Melton has moved second reading of Bill 122, an act respecting the regulations of registered professional planner. Is it the pleasure of the House? The motion carries. I hear carry. Second reading of the bill. Does it make sure the forbidden law? I'm going to turn to the member from Tobacco Lakeshore to identify the committee. Uh, I wish to refer the bill to the Standing Committee on Regulations and Private Bills. Agree? Agree. I hear agree. Okay. All right. 